Hello and welcome. My name's Anthony Pipes and this is my coast to coast walk. past eight I've just had my breakfast downstairs uh, very hospitable uh, very nice too um, I'm just about to leave I'm just packing my kit up I shall probably be gone and checked out easily, easily by nine o'clock and we'll start getting on I've got a new t-shirt they were selling these in the pub um, so I thought a bit of memento I quite like it it's on you know, wick, normal you know, wicking do they call it material so should uh, dry pretty quick if it gets wet and whatever but I quite like that as a little souvenir apparently the chap that works behind the bar prints and was talking to him about them last night so a little souvenir from the journey uh, let's do this after. right we're off on the way out of Danby Whisk now a bit of road walking I think I can feel the aches and pains now I've put my boots on again it's obviously been rubbed one of my boots on my left foot, it's obviously been rubbing around uh, just above the ankle where it's uh, obviously the top of the boot and it's caused quite a bruise on there and I'm not sure I fancy another 70 odd miles with that or however far I've got oh it's not 70 is it? it's more like 60 I think whatever <laughs> it's still a long way to go with a bruised leg and continuous rubbing. I might see if I can wrap a bandage around it later, but uh, we'll carry on now. We'll see how we go. Right. Can't remember what the next stop is, so I'm just going to disappear now. Bye. Day 10. Right. It rained heavy in the night. And my footpath comes through this. I will show you my trousers when I get to the other end, but they're already starting to get drenched. So I already got quite wet, but it's just completely over the path and absolutely soaking me. And the water's running down my trousers, soaking my socks, soaking my boots. So I've made the decision to put my waterproofs on. <laughs> so the trousers are soaked already, but in an effort to try and stop my feet from getting completely soaked, uh, I've put the waterproofs on. It makes you wonder if uh, many coaster coasters get as far as this. This is very overgrown around here. Compared to, oh goodness me, I'm gonna get drenched. Like the lakes and even the dales. I know we're not at the moors yet, we're in the middle. But it's all very overgrown. You would think if tens of thousands of people do this route each year, this wouldn't be as overgrown as this. So I just don't think that many get as far as here. of them fields now which I'm thankful for well for the time being but we are now walking down a very busy road so not just a pleasant section of the walk so far today not fun going at the minute It's a proper muddy section through here. Ah, been attacked by flies. <laughs> Overhanging branches dripping down, soaking me. Yeah, not fun walking this bit today. 
not a good day so far and we're only two and a half miles in so again plenty of signs by the locals telling you which way to go at least there's a little bit of a gap through this one Squelchy sludgy mess though underneath underfoot Tough, tough going today. I think I've seen most of them already. I've not seen a barn owl. Don't tell you, they'll see overgrown crops, sludgy fields, overhanging trees and hedgeways, and all the rest, does it? <laughs> right, we have a tuck shop. Please beware of a witch. <laughs> There's loads of things to look at in a minute. Oh, if it was a better day, there's ice lollies. Right. I'm going to have a... Oh, choices. I'm going to have a Yorkie. And I'm going to have a Ribena, I think, actually. Oh. Was there a, uh, a price list anyway? There's no price list. For another day, that's very tempting. Right, and then we've got a rat, a skeleton, a spider. Uh, an owl and a little witch in a box down there, I think, scaring everyone. Right. I think two pounds should cover a Yorkie and a Ribena, shouldn't it? Normally there's the price list, but it's not here. So. Right, should we go and see if we can get that to scare us again, and then we'll... <laughs> Fabulous. Right, I'm going to have a drink of chocolate. Just after me again. Time in. Always remember to stop, look and listen kids. Right, so we're just approaching the A19. I know there's a service station just behind this hedge though. I'm gonna nip there first and get some food. And then we'll uh, do the life risking challenge of crossing this road. So I've got stocked up on food in there, I've got a few more sandwiches to keep me going now and chocolate, this bag's like three times heavier. Number percent a hot dog and a hot chocolate as well to keep me going. Uh, not the very scenic spot to sit and eat this, I might just go and sit on that plant pot or something over there out of the way. Eat the hot dog and then get going. Right, not much of that hot dog went to, wet, went to waste. But it was a bit dry and manky. Oh, I've got a spot. That was fortunate. Straight across the, this one. Safely navigated. What do I reckon after that red end? Are we going for this? Come on, my shield up. Go, go, go. That's the A19 safely crossed. My heels are really hurting today. I think with the added water in my boots as well, it's just made them all soft and it's really quite painful to walk. I'm only about halfway through today as well. I'm just uh, heading towards Ingleby Arncliffe. If you can just see the village sign up ahead. So Hugh Bell built this tower as part of a water supply to Arncliffe, Arncliffe and Raunton. Raunton? It's been well, isn't it? 1915. So I'll have a look at the sign when I've had a sit down. You'll be back shortly for that. I think they're trying to smoke me out. I think someone's just lit the fire. And it's coming right for me. 
as promised. Basically it tells you what's where. I think we come down this road, so we'll probably pass a few of them on the way. Pause if you want to read. And there is obviously the memorial, memorial cross down here in Ingleby Cross. I guess that's the old church, is it, in the background with the clock tower? And the pub here, the Blue Bell Inn. Which was my planned destination for today. And to be fair, my feet feel like they should be stopping here today. But I don't fancy 23 miles tomorrow, so we're going to clock in another 9 today, I think. Tech tomorrow's way down, way down, way down. So we're now officially in the North Yorkshire Moors Park. And then I know it. The hills are back. <laughs> the hills are back, which hopefully means that the tracks are better. And then them, um, and that them, horrible overgrown grassy footpaths are now behind me. See how cloudy it is up in the trees. Very low level cloud today. Now I imagine the views through these trees can be quite impressive on a nice day. That I'll probably never know. <laughs> it's so foggy out there, up here. Where are we? We are 10 miles into today. And I think it's about 17 to do. It's 12 o'clock. So I'm going well. It's tough going, as I've said, it's not been very nice. But I've got a nice easy track for a little while. For the next section of the walk, I join the Cleveland Way. So I've just come to a little opening off the track here and I assume it's a spot that generally has really really good views. Pea soup comes to mind. It's also, as you can maybe hear, just starting to rain. So I'm going to quickly get my bag off waterproofs on, waterproof on my bag. I've done 11 miles, uh, nearly one o'clock. That's some tough, tough climbing up there. I don't know how much more climbing I've got to do because I can't see a thing in this fog. But yeah, waterproofs are coming on now. So heading through Scarf Woodmore. The weather's not letting up. I've just heard a uh, clatter of thunder. Not seen any lightning yet, but then I don't suppose I'm going to see much in this fog. The thunder did sound like it was a good distance away, so hopefully it can stay a good distance away. I'd rather not be caught out in the middle of a thunderstorm. But at least decent paths for a minute or two. So I'm still on the Cleveland way here, but here's also a stone um, for the like walkway, is it? L-Y-K-E, I think. I could be wrong, I'll put it on screen. Uh, that walk, I believe, is a challenge walk, and I think it's 40 miles across the moors in some direction, um, which you're supposed to complete in 24 hours. 40 miles in 24 hours uh, through these sort of terrain. Not something I don't think I'd fancy doing. But yeah, another another walking challenge for another day, maybe. For a change, it seems to be going downhill. I was nearly going downhill quicker then, I thought. Slow progress though. The body, well, the legs and the feet are certainly starting to uh, feel the strain. But it's not a race, there's no rush. I'll just uh, stop for a quick sandwich. 
another quick look at the map. I think I've got about six more miles to do. So the pace I'm going, it's probably going to be a little bit more than two hours. But it's uh, only just gone two o'clock now, I think it was. There is a bridge, but I don't think it's uh, very deep, so we'll just skit across it. So we're on the way to Carlton Bank now, and Carlton Moor. I've just been past the signpost that says two miles, and I know there's a trig point on top, so I'm guessing it's going to be two miles of going uphill. And we should be at the trig point. So we're heading on to the Raysdale Estate. Whew. Tough, tough going again. I expect nothing less. <laughs> and I'm sure you don't by now. For the time being at least, I'm up above that band of fog. There's some more thin fog rolling over. And it's not exactly opened up many views. But yeah, I'm above the fog. So this dates back to around 2000 BC. It's literally just a pile of stones. It's a burial mound then. Oh! So these are kind of the best views I've had of her any moorland since I've been up and around and in it. And they're not exactly fantastic. And the weather is supposed to clear up a bit. Whether this fog will lift at all as I get further over it's actually uh, still creeping over the hills. So time will tell. I've got to uh, Two or three miles to get to the trig yet, I think. So we'll see what it's like along route. This fog is slowly dispersing. It's got until I get to the highest point in your picture, which is where the trig is, to clear. I hope it does. Might not fully, but if I can get some half decent views, I'll be happy. That was draining. But, hello trick point. Uh, still not decided where I'm camping yet. I may just drop down to the Lord Stones and that be it. I think it's nearer, I know it's nearer. But, we'll decide that in a minute. For now, sorry if you're wobbling all over the place and not level. Coals are down. Carlton Bank trig point. Check, that is a boundary stone. A foggy old view, which is a shame. What's that? I don't know, there's something right on the horizon over there, but there's no chance I'm going to find out what it is, is there? An old mast in the distance, I don't know what that's for. I think it's time to sit down and have a sandwich. I'm going to ring the Lordstones um, campsite actually first. Sorry to put my sleeve in your face again, it's four o'clock. I've already done 17 miles. Whoa. Not very steady on their feet. Uh, I'm going to ring up and see if we've got any uh, availability, I think, because it's, it's nearer to get to, as I say, than the other one. I know it's £22.50, but I'm done in today. And I think they close at 5, so I suppose I need to ring and make sure that there's a spot before then. If not, I'll try the other one. If not, I'll just find somewhere random to pitch up. I'd be quite happy to do that tonight. I could quite happily do that here. Sorry, I'm trying to come on, honey. Mm. 
I've never seen another walked away from the trig. Another band of fog, of fog has come over. So I think really I was quite lucky to just get that little break. Okay, the views weren't stunning, but that gave me a little idea. So I've rang a lot of stones. They've got space. I've had enough. My feet are killing. That's where we're heading. We'll be there in half an hour ish. Right, I'm going to put you away and get my sticks back out. All right, so I got in at the Lord Stones. Uh, not a problem at all. I gave them a ring. They said they had places. Uh, I was only about half a mile away uh, whilst at the trig point. Half a mile, three quarters of a mile at the most. Uh, so I've dropped down. I'm still in the fog, as you can see. Or not see, you can't see a lot. Um, as I've got to the campsite and gone to pay, she said it's only a tenner. So I didn't even question it. She said it's only a tenner, so I don't know where the £22.50 that it says on the website comes from. Uh, there's only two other tents pitched here. Uh, it's very quiet, very peaceful, so I've got no complaints really. Uh, I'll probably be gone in the morning. I think the uh, cafe shuts at five and doesn't open until nine, so I'll probably be gone before that opens anyway. So it's all paper, all sorted. Not much else to say. The feet are killing. I'm glad to get some weight off them. <laughs> Just put them up for a bit. Well, put them out for a bit, lay them flat for a bit. 12 miles tomorrow. See you then. Thank you for watching. Oh, I love you.